We're going to talk about reducing fractions. This is Lesson 6b. Hopefully you haven't missed or skipped any previous videos in the GED Math Playlist. And if you have and become lost or confused, you need to watch the playlist or click this description for links to it, okay? When we reduce a fraction, we find an equal fraction with a smaller numerator and denominator. So this bar on the top represents 2 fourths because it's split into four parts. That's the denominator, there's four parts and that are equal. And the numerator is how many are shaded. So it's 2 fourths. This is split into two parts, that's the denominator, and one part is shaded. But they're equal because the bars are the same size in all. It's just this one's missing that little line there, see? So these are equivalent fractions, and this two-fourths can be reduced to one-half. And we know the fraction is reduced to lowest terms when one, the number one, is the only number that divides evenly into both the numerator and denominator. So we're going to use division to reduce fractions. And we can reduce a fraction by dividing the numerator and denominator by the same number. It's going to be the exact same number for both the numerator and denominator. If we have 2 fourths, we can divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. It can't get any smaller than half. So you know it's as small as it can get when the numerator is a 1, okay? Or if 1 is the only number that it could be divided by, that's it. It's as far as it can go, all right? Look at this one. We have 5 fifteenths. We can divide the 5 by 5 and the 15 by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 5 fifteenths is equivalent to 1 third. We have 12 40 eighths. We can divide the 12 by a 12 and the 48 by a 12. That'll give us 1 fourth. We can also remember to use the greatest number that both of these have in common. That's where knowing your multiplication tables is going to help you because you're going to know that 12 times 4 is 48. That's going to help you go quicker on the test. You're not going to be trying to count on your fingers or, you know, trying to figure out your multiplication tables if you already have them known, okay? But using that greatest number, that biggest number that they have in common, is going to help you save time. Now, you could do it by little numbers. We could divide the 12 by 2 and the 48 by 2, and that's going to give us a 6 24 Then we can divide the 6 by 2 and the 24 by 2, and that's going to give us a 3 12 Then we can divide the 3 by a 3 and the 12 by a 3 and get a 1 4th. And we're finally at the 1 4th that we had up here when we just divided by 12 and did it once by finding that greatest number they had in common. So you can give yourself a lot of extra work by using these little baby numbers. It will work. You'll get the right answer. So if you're not quite sure how to do this, you could do it this way. It'll still work, but this way you'll have more time for other problems because you'll go quicker. And the greatest number that 12 and 48 have in common as factors, remember factors are the facts. They're what you multiply together to get the answer. So 12 times 1 is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48, so 12 and 48 have a 12 in common, okay? That's the greatest common factor, and if you've heard of that before, that's what it is. It's that GCF, that greatest number that they have in common as factors is the greatest common factor. So we just try to find the biggest number that they have in common. Biggest number they have in common is the greatest common factor, okay? So we can reduce a fraction quickly by finding that greatest number they have in common. 24 thirtieths can be divided by 6 for the numerator and denominator, and 24 divided by 6 is 4, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. We'll get a 4 fifths. Or we can just keep dividing by small numbers until it's reduced. So we can divide it by 2 and get a 12, and divide the 30 by 2 and get a 15. Then we can divide it by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then we get our 4 fifths. This way is quicker. And actually, you want to know something cool? If you multiplied this 2 times this 3, you'd get that 6. Look at that. It works every time, too. All right. Now we've got 45 ninetieths. Now, we could do it this small, slow way and divide both numerator and denominator by a 5. 
and we'll get 9 eighteenths. Then we can divide them both by a 3 and get 3 6. Then divide both of those by 3 and get 1 half. Or we could have just done divided the numerator and denominator by 45 because 45 is half of 90. 45 plus 45 is 90. So you could do it this way and still get the correct answer, so don't flip out. Don't worry. If this is how you want to do it, go ahead. If you can grasp using the largest number they have in common, you'll save some time, and it'll still be right, okay? So either way, we'll reduce the fraction to its lowest terms, but knowing your multiplication facts will help you go faster doing this. You can actually find an app to horse around with and practice your multiplication facts. There's all kinds of them. There's like space multiplication or something like that. I think I posted it once before. But if you find a really good multiplication app that you really like and you'd like to tell people about it, post a link in the comments so other people can use it too and find it, okay? Or talk about it. All right, now it says to circle the two equal fractions in each line. So this is separate from this one. So let's look at this first one. We need to find two fractions in this line that are equal to each other, that they are equivalent. We have one-third, two-ninths, four-twelfths, and five-tenths. Well, we know this one is reduced as far as it will go. And so is this one because we can't divide this by two and this by two, and that's as far as it'll go. The only thing we could divide it by is one. So this is reduced and this is reduced. Is this one reduced? Can we divide 4 by 2? What would we get? We'd get 2 6, right? We can divide it again by 2. That would be 1 third. We also could have just divided by 4 and gone quicker, see, by using that greatest number they have in common. That would have been one-third. See, we would have gone faster. So this is one-third, and what is this one? Well, five times one is five, and five times two is ten, so this one's actually equal to a half. So which of these are equal fractions? The one-third and the four-twelfths are equivalent fractions, okay? Let's try this one. What would this be reduced to lowest terms? We could divide this 10 by a 5, right? And divide the 15 by a 5, and what would we get? Two-thirds, right? If we divided this by 5 and this by 5, we'd get one-third. So the two fractions that are the same are the 10 fifteenths and the 2 thirds. See? So you, you might have to reduce them to find the answer, okay? Which is no big deal, all right? Just find some number that they have in common and do it. Now it says to solve and express in lowest terms. So there's 36 pies, 9 pies are cherry. What fraction of pies are cherry? Well, 9 are cherry, and there's 36 in all. So we know that in all is going to be the denominator, because that's the total amount, all right? So that was easy to put into the denominator. The denominator is always the total amount, okay? And 9 of them were cherry, so that's 9 36. So we can divide both the numerator and denominator by a 3 and get 3 twelfths. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 36 divided by 3 is 12. We can divide by 3 again and get a one-fourth, or we could have just divided the numerator and denominator by nine and did it in one easy step, because if you know your times table, nine times one is nine, nine times four is 36. They both have nine in common, so we could have divided by nine, see? Knowing your multiplication facts is going to make you go quicker on this test, and it'll give you more time to do the harder problems, all right? So, now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 79. And keep in mind that if the numerator and denominator are both even numbers, we can always divide them by 2 and just keep dividing by 2 until you find it, okay? The next video is going to be raising fractions to higher terms. It's going to be lesson 6C, 
And if you need more help, it's going to be a link to a grade 4 math 6.3, which is number 55 in the list. There's going to be a link to that video and the previous videos that we've done for fractions so far in Lesson 5 and 6. Okay? And I'm also going to have a link to my fractions playlist that's got I think it's got like 140 videos in there on how to do fractions. But that's it, that gets into detail about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and all that stuff. And we haven't gotten to that point yet in this GED playlist. All right? But there are some fraction videos in the fraction playlist that can help you. All right? Okay. Let's move on. See how you do on that skill focus on page 79. If you do okay, then I'll meet you at the next video. If you have a little trouble... Watch those videos. Watch this grade four video and the previous GED videos or watch this one again, all right? You don't want to get yourself really confused by moving forward when you shouldn't, all right? You can do this. I'll see you next time. Bye.